we have a word problem here that we're going to graph the system of inequality in order to solve the problem in the word problem. It says a gardener will use up to 240 square feet for planting flowers and vegetables. She wants the area used for vegetables to be at least three times the area used for flowers. Let x denote the area in square footage or in square feet used for flowers and let y denote the area in square feet for vegetables. Shade the region corresponding to all values of x and y that satisfy these requirements. So maybe the first thing you notice is that we're just working with quadrant one on our Cartesian coordinate plane. So we have our x and our y with this being the origin. And the reason we're only working with quadrant one is because there are certain constraints in this particular problem. We can't have negative square footage. So the only solutions that we're actually interested in are ones that would give us positive square footage and that would be realistic in the real world situation. So here let's go ahead and circle the important information. We see that the total we have is 200 square feet that the gardener will use up to 200, 240 square feet. So that'll be total. Total equals 240 square feet. And then for planting flowers and vegetables. So we have flowers and we have vegetables. Flowers and vegetables. She wants the area for the, well let's see here, let's look at this first. Let x denote the area used for flowers. So area for flowers, this is the area total. And then area used for vegetables. Area for flowers is going to equal x. And the, the area for vegetables is going to equal y. So here we have that form, some x plus or minus some y is going to equal or be greater than or less than some total where we're working with the same units. We see the units are all going to be the same. It's going to be square footage um, of area. So we'll go ahead and let our x and our y, x being the flowers and y being the vegetables, we add that together to get up to 240 square feet. 240 square feet. Now it's saying he, the gardener is willing to use up to 240 square feet. That means he's not willing to use more than that. This is the amount that he's using and he's willing to use up to this amount. So the amount that needs to be more is the 240, up to. So this means that he is willing to use the 240 square feet, meaning this right here. His area for flowers plus his area for vegetables can equal 240 square feet or it can be less than. It can be less than 240 square feet. Either way is fine with him as long as he doesn't go above the 240 square feet. So we have one of our inequalities right here. All right, the second inequality, let's look. It says she wants the area for vegetables to be at least, keywords, at least three times the area used for flowers. So now we're comparing the area for flowers and vegetables. So we'll set up our X and our Y right here. And it says that the area for vegetables, which is Y, needs to be at least three times the area used for flowers, which is X. So she wants the flowers to be the smaller area, this one to be the larger area. And this one is going to be equal to, if it was an equation, Y, the, the larger area, would be equal to up to three times the amount 
of the smaller area. So if we multiply this smaller area three times, they would be equivalent. Except that here for the inequality, it says be at least three times. That tells us that she wants this three times as big or even bigger. So this is going to be greater than or equal to three times the smaller area. So when we write our system here, well, I'll put it here in the corner. We now have x plus y is less than or equal to 240. And we have, we'll go ahead and flip this around because it is the same regardless of what side it is on. As long as we keep this sign facing the same way, it's facing y. y is greater than or equal to 3x. We'll write that here. y is greater than or equal to 3x. So here we would want to, first, first step is we would want to put this into y equals mx plus b form. I'll see if I can fit this in here. We see the first one is not quite in y equals mx plus b form. I'll move that over just a little bit so that you can see. x plus y is less than or equal to 240. We would want to use opposite operations here and subtract x from both sides so that way we have it in y equals mx plus b form so that it's easier to, to graph. So when we subtract x from this side, we get 0. Subtract x from this side, we're left with y is less than or equal to negative x plus 240. And the first one stays the same because it's already in y equals mx plus b form. y is greater than or equal to 3x. Now we can graph this. And you see in the first one, it's a really large y-intercept. And that's okay. We can set up our graph however we like. Each of these grid points doesn't have to be 1 as long as we make it uniform. So if we label this as 0, 0, this is our y-axis, this is our x-axis, and we label each line as 20, then we'll be able to fit this on here. Be patient, bear with me here as I label these. 140, 160, 180, 200, 220, and 240. And to make it consistent, I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'll label these as 20 as well. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and so forth. Now, let's go ahead and look at the first linear inequality. We would have 240, a positive 240 as our y-intercept. So we could come up 0, 240, and put our plot right there. Now, we have a slope of negative 1 over 1. Well, if we look right here, it's the same thing if we go from grid to grid, the corners. Because if we look at a negative 1 over 1, and we were to multiply, because we're jumping by 20s, we were to multiply by 20 over 20, which is the same thing as 1. Any numerical value over itself is equal to 1. And multiplying any numerical value by 1 gives you that same original value. So I'm not changing the, the constant at all. This is going to give me negative 20 over 20. And we see that if we start here and go down 20 and to the right positive 20, it's, so it's the same movement as if it was 1 to 1. So we'll go negative 20 down and over. We would continue on this pattern. And we look at that first equation and we see that it is less than or equal to, telling us that it needs to be a solid line. So we'll draw in that solid line here. Not a dashed line because it is telling us that the points on the line are part of the solution set. 
So we have the first part of our inequality, our system, is graphed. So we'll look at the second part. Y is greater than or equal to 3X. Well, we see that it's missing a Y-intercept, which means we start at zero at the origin. And our slope is a positive 3, a positive 3 over 1. If we were to multiply that by 20 over 20, which is our grid, we would get a 60 over 20, which would tell us how to move. And so if these were labeled as each individual one, one, two, three, it's the same pattern. We would move up 20, 40, 60 over 20, or up three over one. And we see that y is greater than or equal to. With that equal sign, it allows us to draw a solid line. And now we need to figure out where we're going to shade. We see the first line, y is less than or equal to negative x plus 240, tells us that all the y values below the line or less than that line are going to be included. So we would shade below this top one and above the bottom line here, all the y values above it. So if we were to shade below this, it would include all of these values. And if we were to shade above this line, it would include all of these values up here. And the overlap we see is this triangle right in here. So all of these coordinates would give us a positive square footage that satisfies this scenario. He wants to use up to 240 square feet and he wants to use at least three times the area for vegetables than for flowers. So we can come over here and see this point here, 240, 0, 240, tells us that he could use zero square foot for flowers and all of the square footage for the vegetables, which would satisfy this because 240 is at least three times larger than zero. It, he doesn't say that he has to use any of square footage for the flowers as long as the vegetable garden is three, at least three times bigger. And we see here where the lines intersect would give us that perfect 180 and 60, which is exactly three times the amount. Y would be three times the amount of X if we were to plug in this coordinate. And that's what our system of inequalities would look like.